Lumetri is a color grading effect found in Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. It allows you to apply an input LUT that converts your footage from log to rec 709, change exposure, white balance, saturation, do curve adjustments, color wheel adjustments and more, allowing you to give your project a unique look. But Lumetri does it wrong. Light is energy. If you double the amount of energy, you double the amount of light and therefore double the luminance. If you halve the amount of energy, you halve the amount of light and therefore halve the luminance. This is what we call linear. It's how light or any kind of energy works in the real world. On the other hand, to more efficiently store our color data in a limited number of bits, we transform the values to something non-linear like gamma or log. However, trying to apply color operations on these non-linear colors will give incorrect results. For a calibrated 100 nits sRGB display, an 18% middle gray square is about 18 nits. Doubling the value in linear results in a square that is 36 nits, or twice as luminous. But doubling the value in sRGB gamma results in a square that is 83 nits, or over four and a half times more luminous. Clearly, that is bad. Halving the values shows a similar effect. The middle gray square becomes 9 nits when doing the color operation in linear and 4 nits for sRGB gamma, more than twice as dark than what it should be. Color operations found in color grading and compositing applications are meant to reflect the real world and are based on formulas that assume the values are linear. Performing them on gamma encoded or log values might look fine, but are mathematically incorrect. Lumetri does not do its color operations in linear. Instead, it is whatever color space your footage is in or what the input LUT converts it to. For changing exposure, white balance and shifting hues, I will show you the difference between performing it in a linear color space compared to performing it in a gamma encoded and tone mapped color space, like how Lumetri does it. Here I have a gradient, it is in Ari Log C. By adding Lumetri and setting the input LUT to convert from Log C to Rec 709, I end up with a tone mapped Rec 709 image. You can see on the right that it is clipped. When lowering the exposure in Lumetri, it does not bring back the clipped detail, it just makes the clipped parts grey, even though that detail is there in the log footage. When increasing the exposure, it looks better, but it also brings up the black level. Doing the same in linear, by first converting it from log C to linear, you can see that when lowering the exposure, the clipped diesel comes back, and when increasing the exposure, it does not bring up the black level. This works, since mathematically, it is the exact same as increasing the ISO. Here I have the same gradient, but tinted blue. Showing it in linear, it's clear that the gradient is a single hue and saturation, with the only thing changing being the luminance. The factor scope shows a line, since it is displaying YUV values and the UV values are still affected by luminance. Just keep in mind that it is actually showing a single hue and saturation. Converting it to a tone mapped Rec 709 image shows that the hue and saturation are now affected by the luminance. This is expected and is mostly a result of the tone mapping and partially of the gamma encoding. Our eyes, cinema cameras and film cameras all do this. However, when trying to white balance this blue gradient in Lumetri, a problem pops up. White balancing the brighter areas throws off the darker areas, but white balancing the darker areas throws off the brighter areas. Even though the gradient is the same hue and saturation, Lumetri cannot make it a neutral white. White balancing the gradient in linear works just fine. 
white balancing comes down to dividing by the color you want to white balance against, but with its brightness at 100% which is why I am using a solid with a defined blend mode. The same gradient that Lumetri could not white balance is now in neutral white. Taking the same blue gradient, but instead shifting the hue close to 180 degrees using Lumetri's hue versus hue curve causes parts to become orange and other parts magenta, giving it an unnatural look. Instead, if we take Lumetri's hue versus hue curve, but have it operate on the linear values by converting it to linear, then doing the hue versus hue, and after that converting it to Rec 7 9, it is as if the gradient was always red, clearly showing that the tools used by Lumetri were meant to operate on linear values. But Lumetri is shooting itself in the foot by providing it tone mapped Rec 7 9 values instead. When taking Lumetri's tools and having them operate in linear, they work as intended. Premiere Pro is not color managed and neither is Lumetri, so they cannot properly work with colors since they don't even know what color space they are in. Premiere Pro has existed for a long time and when it was first developed, most computers did not have the performance to handle colors in the proper way. Most videos back then were also not the kind that you'd color grade most likely resulting in the decision to not add color management to make Premiere Pro a bit faster. Premiere Pro and Lumetri seem to be meant for consumers and online content creators, where it's fine if the colors are a bit off, these aren't Hollywood movies, even though it's way better to have tools that actually work properly. Color operations like exposure, white balance, saturation and more were made to work in linear. Trying to use these operations on gamma encoded or log footage might look fine but will always be off. In a normal color managed workflow, the footage is converted to a linear color space. The operations are performed on it and at the end it is converted from the linear color space to the color space that you want to view it in, often the one of your display with a tone mapper. Digital content creation applications geared towards professionals, where correctly working with colors is important, all use a color managed workflow. They allow you to specify the input color space of your footage and specify the view transform for displaying it on your monitor. Premiere Pro and After Effects do not have this, at least not in any meaningful capacity. After Effects comes closer to this, but in my experience, it is so dysfunctional that it forces me to use a third party plugin, adding open color IO support to After Effects, where I manually convert between color spaces and do my own color management. Open color IO is an open source library found in most applications to handle the color management, where you have configurations that specify color spaces together with rules on how to convert between them. Additionally, you can specify the color spaces of your display with option D looks applied. Imagine if Premiere Pro and After Effects added this, just like almost every other program has done. Lumetri, just like a lot of other Adobe applications, does not work with colors correctly, resulting in unintuitive and stressful experiences. But for the average consumer and online content creator, it works fine. Small adjustments here and there still look good, and when looking at tutorials for Lumetri, there are many instances of people making their footage look great using Lumetri. Color grading is an art form and it doesn't have to be mathematically correct, but it is almost always better to have tools that do work in an intuitive sense and are mathematically correct, especially when a situation arises that needs it to be accurate. If you are curious how a color grading application that actually does color management acts, you can download DaVinci Resolve and in your project settings under color management, set the color signs to ACES CC and the output defines transform to the color space that your monitor is in. Then you can right click on your footage and set the ACES input transform to the color space of your footage and give color grading a try. 
Terren van Hummert has a video on his YouTube channel where he was following a color grading tutorial where the instructor was using Resolve and was white balancing a shot. Terren was using Lumetri and was not able to get the same shot properly white balanced. This was due to Resolve doing the operations in linear, which Lumetri did not, causing Lumetri to give incorrect results. Terren did not do anything wrong. Lumetri did.